It takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. Eleanor Roosevelt. My friends, just do the work. 10 to 15 minutes a day, that is all we ask for charting mastery. Please, that's all you've got to do. You don't have to have a penny to start doing what we do on a daily basis. Just start listening to the program. Sign up at the website for the daily emails. You will get all the special trainings that we put out. They are free. That list will not be spammed in any way. It will just be coming to you on a daily basis. You'll get the daily market reviews, the weekly market reviews, and all the special trainings. And again, we've got another special training in the mix for you today. Want you to have that. Also, you will get a great deal out of all of them. Now, let's keep pushing through the charts. What do we have going on today? Well, we see only one thing up for the day, and it was the S&P 500 up just barely 0.12%. The big downer is, of course, Bitcoin at almost 9%. And of course, the one thing about Bitcoin you got to get used to, volatility. What do we see on the S&P? Well, it's still trying to cross over, going down on the price percent oscillator. Again, that won't be drawn until the end of the week. Remember, Candles don't end until candles are fully drawn, so you don't rely on them until they're finished drawing. Two-day candles take how long? Two days. Half-day candles take how long? 195 minutes or half the day. Weekly candles take five days, or if it's a short week, four days. So we're, we are two days into a five-day candle. What do we see? We see a red down candle, little wick on top, big wick on the bottom. That wick comes down and touches the weekly trend line. Now, we could draw a better trend line at this moment. We could make that even a little more tough that it's actually blown through it. Again, no ability to connect three candlesticks. So that's sort of what we're stuck with. Again, when we draw trend lines, and in fact, I'm going to put at the end of today's training, Trend lines. We have two trainings on that. They'll be at the end of today's video. Please take those if you don't know about trend lines. The magic words are bottom up, top down. That's how you draw them from the bottom when the charts are going up and from the top when they're going down. We'll see a downtrend line here in a little bit. So we see the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator going negative already. Again, not a drawn candle yet, but that's what's happening right now. Now, of course, the latest candle has finished drawing. It was the Monday-Tuesday candle, and it has what? Crossed over going down. That is a two-day crossover going down. It is going in the opposite direction of the weekly chart. We're going to edit that candlestick. I'm sorry, that um, we're going to edit not the candlestick, but the actual Let's see, here we go. Why is, oh, oh, I dropped my computer the other day somehow, and my one is not working. I have a standby computer that we're uploading with all the information, so it is a little harder to get the one going, but I'm sorry, the arrow is now going down, and what will we consequently do? We're going to also change our trend line to reflect that down move. Derivative oscillator still positive, but losing momentum. Half day chart. Big down in the morning, not so much in the afternoon. Again, overall for the day, the S&P down, I'm sorry, up 0.12, everything else down. Now we're going to go back to the weekly. Go to the Q's. The Q's was down 0.30%. And of course, we have a strong red down candle forming, pushing through the weekly trend line already. We had a cautionary candle last week, a slowdown in the up movement. And of course, you can see price percent oscillator moving away from the red signal line derivative oscillator, building downward momentum. Go to the two-day chart. And of course, that two-day uh, crossover has occurred. And we should have marked that earlier. You know, I know why we didn't mark it earlier, because I, this latest is actually what actually pulled it all the way over. Sometimes what happens when you have strong down movement is what will happen is this blue line will actually retrace and go back on other lines. I was like, 
Am I kicking myself? Did I not catch this earlier? No, it didn't happen earlier. It's because of this super strong movement. You'll see it kick back on you a little bit. So derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum, price percent oscillator, of course, crossed over now going down, and we've redrawn our trend line. I'm looking for the arrow. We're going to redraw this arrow now. We're going to edit that and, of course, make it 1, 8. And there we go. It's 180 degree opposite going down again. So we are seeing the market starting to fall off. Now, does this mean that this is where it's going from now on? It's reached its peak and we're going to go into weeks and weeks of decline? Don't know that yet. We'll wait. We will see. We can see how things surge down in the morning on Tuesday and then recover a little bit in the afternoon. Nonetheless, still down 0.30%. That's where we are on stocks. Let's go to bonds. That weekly vertical crossover just, or I'm sorry, two-day recross in the direction of the weekly vertical crossover continues to pay dividends. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading down. Nice red down candle forming. Two-day chart plumbing lower lows. Dropping off, heading down strongly. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. We can see down in the morning, not so much in the afternoon, but overall down 0.29%. And remember, our jumping in point on that two-day recross, let me go back to the two-day chart for you, was back on the 3rd of February. That represented Tuesday the 2nd, Wednesday the 3rd, and of course the jumping in point right around the 150 mark or so, down to a low of 141.14. That's nice, my friends. That's quite nice, getting close to $10. Uh, so good to see things moving down there, a chart we can count on because, again, the particularly the Qs has been really tough. And the, the NASDAQ 100, that's the NASDAQ 100. The S&P 500 also not so easy. What about gold? Gold down 0.23%. As we look at gold this week, that solid green candle shows us a slowdown in the go down, as we say. Price percent oscillator not heading down at the strong angle, stronger angle it had been, leveling off a little bit. Derivative oscillator still heading down. So again, price is below. And again, like I was talking about trend lines, we have a down sloping trend line, bottom up, top down. So again, the, line, the trend line goes on the top when you've got downward movement. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Two-day chart, we can see where things have flattened. And, of course, what did we have? We've had, we talked about the strong up movement yesterday over a percent. That, of course, translated with today's little bit of down movement in nonetheless a green up candle. Wick on the bottom, wick on the top. More like a spinning top, some indecision there. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum, still negative. Price percent oscillator still negative, but a little more than flat, heading up a little bit. We go to the half-day chart. Of course, we had that crossover back in the morning on Monday. And really, that's when it peaked. What's happened since then is sort of a leveling off and a slipping sideways. So we'll continue to watch and see. You can see where gold stopped moving up right on that two-day trend line. If it punches through that, then of course we'll, we'll continue to pay attention to gold and see if at some point it's going to start. It will at some point. It's inexorable move up. Hasn't happened yet. We'll see when that does because I can't wait to get back into gold as far as gold appreciating, not shorting it. Now, lastly, Let's go to Bitcoin. What do we see on Bitcoin? Down for the day, 8.92%. A big downer day for Bitcoin. What do we see on the weekly chart? We see things about where they were this last week as far as the high goes and as far as the candle, as far as how high the candle body itself has gone. A much smaller candle than last week. Price percent oscillator slipping over. Uh, again, it's still positive, but heading down. Derivative oscillator gaining some downward momentum. It'd been just about flat. Let's look at that two-day chart. Two-day chart had been moving up quite nicely since we had that two-day recross going up. And now we have a red 
open box red candle, which means a slowdown in the up movement. Hasn't crossed over on that two-day chart if and when it does over the next, uh, well, at the end of the next two days. That could be a real sign that you want to consider getting out. Those of you who are still holding on for some uh, more up movement, you can sure do that. You can sure watch and see which way Bitcoin is going to go. That half-day chart, that's where we saw things starting to slip over after they were topping uh, back on Monday and then starting to move down, move down strongly on Tuesday. So that's where we are with Bitcoin. Again, pay close attention to that two-day chart. See what Bitcoin does for you on Wednesday and continue to make decisions. Now, that's where we are as we end the day on Tuesday. Go into Wednesday. Remember, we are not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to train with us. Lots of great training out there. All of it is free. We so appreciate you being with us. And of course, the special training today in your show notes for subscribers. Have a plan before pulling the trigger. Huh, always have a plan before pulling the trigger. That is good advice. That ought to be one of the quotes to start the show. If you don't have our book, please order it. Support us there. And don't forget, Patreon members, go ahead and start sending in your emails with the stocks you're interested in us helping you chart for practice trading along with the questions you have for our live Q&A call-in session first Wednesday of March coming up quite soon. If you're not a Patreon member at any of the three levels, you can participate in that. Plus, you get our three-part training, Options Made Simple, The Charting Wealth Way. I think it's the best training you're going to get on the Internet when it comes to options. If you're interested in options, this is where to start. And, of course, it's free for our Patreon supporters. God bless. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.